Hi, welcome to valuationpodcast.com, a podcast and video series about all things related to business and valuation. My name is Melissa Gregg, and I provide valuation and mediation services based in St. Louis, Missouri. Today, we're actually kind of building upon a prior discussion that we had, but we're going to be discussing the pandemic economy and divorce with Josh Schiltz and Patrick Kilbane. Josh's practice is really focused on complex financial matters and disputes. He's a frequent lecturer on forensic accounting topics and has been involved with hundreds of forensic investigations dealing with matters involving personal and business disputes, as well as the identification and mitigation of fraudulent activities. He's also provided expert testimony in commercial and family matters surrounding business valuations, economic damages, fraud, and other um, disciplines having to do with accounting and economics. He's a forensic valuation expert and offers tax advice in the state of Florida. Pat, on the other hand, is a wealth advisor with nearly a decade of experience in helping clients coordinate their wealth management plans. He's also general counsel for Ullman Wealth Partners. He is the director of Divorce Advisory Group, where he assists, guides, and supports clients before, during, and after they begin the divorce process. He helps high net worth clients make financial decisions at all stages of the divorce process by using his family law experience, uh, his wealth management experience, and his certified divorce financial analyst designation. I feel like there's an, an impending supply chain issue happening, right? And so I bring that up to you smart gentlemen and I was like, you know, this, this supply chain, it's affecting cost of goods sold and inventory. And like, how are we going to deal with this? And I thought, Patrick, it was really interesting that you gave a different perspective. And that, and, and I want you to give it now because that was important for me because I'm constantly seeing things from my perspective. And then you came in and what did you say about the supply chain? Right. So when we were talking about doing this podcast, you were talking about you know, specific inventory issues that you're seeing in a, in a, in a business, um, construction, timber. Yeah. And, you know, I said, look, the great thing about being, about building diversified portfolios for my clients is of course there are easily identifiable supply chain issues. And we were specifically talking about lumber. And I said, look, the United States gets its timber from two places, Northwest Canada and North Carolina. Well, in Canada, there's, you know, people just chalk it up to COVID, but what they don't realize is there's a parasite that has really contaminated, you know, the, the lumber, which has contributed to um, a lack of supply. There's also been tariffs that the Canadian government has, uh, you know, increased on their lumber exports from Canada. Now, certainly there are some issues with transportation getting the lumber to where it needs to go. But, you know, to just blame it, blame it blanketly on COVID, you know, is, is not responsible. And I mean, you know, look at, look at PPE, for example, remember when the pandemic first started, you know, the PPE was manufactured in China, but look how quickly we pivoted and alleviated that supply chain issue. I I think, you know, just like everything else, so many people are focused on just such a very short period of time but over the long term, these, you know, dips in, in demand or they're all going to flatten out. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I I don't think anybody listening, you know, and, and, and remember, I'm not looking at this from necessarily a valuation perspective, but, you know, a long term um, investment plan, wealth management. Yeah. Plan, you know, is, is anybody on this podcast going to do anything different because there is a lumber shortage? They're not. And, and, you know, this, um, um, you know, these, this, this developer in China that has, that that had the market spooked on Monday, but now the equity markets are okay with what's going on in the, in the highly leveraged debt with this real estate develop developer in China, you know, there's always going to, there's always going to be some, some crisis du jour. And we, another thing we talked about is the ship that got the Egyptian ship that got lodged in the Suez canal for six days in March. I mean, that contributed to supply chain issues. When you have a 1300 foot vessel that blocks the entire Suez Canal, that's going to create supply chain issues. So yes, COVID has a lot to do with it, but it's not the entire story. Mm-hmm. You know, something that you said there, and it reminds me, Pat, in our field, we're 
some people are starting to say, look, when you do evaluation, it's not about a number. It's really the story of the company, right? And you're giving the quantitative to it. And, and I agree. I'm, I'm on that side of agreement that a true valuation professional can either tell or write the story of it. A lot of the stories that we've heard is, well, COVID did this and COVID did that. And, you know, when we started investigating those things, no, that wasn't the the point. So the excuse is lifted, right? And we are starting to challenge and look into some of those other things that you're talking about. Um, But more importantly, I think the point is what I'm hearing, and this is somebody who doesn't do valuations is still, we're not in the trust business, right? And just because a business owner says it's depressed because of COVID, well, we should probably take a look underneath the hood to see whether or not that is true or not true, right? Because I am hearing a lot of, well, COVID did this. Mm-hmm. And well, I think and I that's think... a valid point that both of you, look, let's, did COVID really do it? I mean, to say that it was just COVID, well, what did COVID do? Yeah. I guess is the next point. And the interesting part though, and that's why this is kind of like pandemic 2.0, right? Because at the beginning, when we would be doing the valuations or divorce, everybody would say, well, 2020 is not going to happen again. So let's just continue to look at 2019, right? And we looked at what the past had in the past five years, and we just kind of ignored 2020. Not we, but, you know, generally business people were like... We took it as an anomaly, and we didn't put a lot of weight to it. Correct. And now it's like, wait a second, you know, I mean, I'm talking to clients, and I was like, your business is significantly different than it was in 19. It's significantly different than when even it was at the beginning of the pandemic, because maybe they were part of, you know, creating masks. Maybe they were doing this. Maybe they shifted for a certain time period. You know, we had some clients that started to do the hand sanitizer because they had manufacturing, you know, so we really, it's just made us continue to have to look at it But I think it's also going to potentially have to shift the courts to understand what a discounted cash flow method looks like, what looking at the future looks like, because we cannot, you know, like that is the purest definition of using a discounted cash flow method. If the past is not indicative of the future, then you have to look at the future for the indicator of value, which is a discounted cash flow method. Um, You know, and I think that things are shifting. I mean, even trials, you know, you say that it's easier to do this podcast. I've been able to testify in trials that maybe I wouldn't have been involved in if I would have had to travel. But they in and in some cases, everybody else goes live, right? But I come in as a zoom or WebEx. So I think that has been shifting tremendously. And, and, And Melissa, Great, great info there. What I would tell all the valuation experts who are listening to the podcast is your job as an expert witness is to educate the court. Okay. And I think the more context that you can give to what you're doing and why, you know, you believe in your professional opinion that whatever method you, that you use to arrive uh, at your value is one that's, you know, that's generally accepted. And I, I, I mean, I, look, any, any skilled lawyer is always going to be able to, you know, make a case that, you know, history is, is not always going to repeat itself, but it tend to, tends to always repeat itself.